afternoon. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How's everybody doing? We are just getting started here this morning. Oh no, afternoon. What day is it? What time it's is Monday. it? It's Monday. It's Monday. It's not morning. I think it's the 6th. April 6th? Check. It's the 6th. It is April 6th. <clears throat> That's unbelievable. Today, uh, the letter of the day. Today, the letter of the day is Q, oh. which is, oh, hello, which is a very, very awesome letter. Um, Roly is here. He is very excited about the letter Q. Not as excited as he is for R tomorrow. R for Roly. Um, what's, what's going on here today? We have Gio joining us at the table. He's wearing his headphones and watching his iPad. We have Frankie out here on the swing. She's banana. Banana? It's not. It's not. <laughs> Today we had a it's a it's a it's an inside joke between me and Gio. Just trust me. Uh, that's not. Well, yeah, because we were watching this uh, Archibald, and they were like, "It's a giant potato," and they're like, "No, it's not." And so Gio and I just started going, "No, it's not. No, it's snot." Over and over, it was. You're I don't know. I don't know if he's lucky or do doomed to have a parent like me. You're such a good parent to a three-year-old. Oh man, no, no, it's not. Nearly four-year-old. <laughs> well, we are going to get started with some lettering here today. We are um, almost through the whole alphabet, which is kind of insane. Um, don't worry, we've got more things there, coming your way. There are more things. I think. Um, some of the fun things that we've discovered throughout this whole process is uh, how much more we can talk about lettering and how much more we can teach about lettering. Um, so we're going to probably continue this class um, after we're done with Z and we will be doing some um, script exercises, some flourishes. We're going to get through uh, the numbers, uh, numerals, um, do, do some education about spacing and tracking. We're not really tracking because it's lettering. Um, you know, using a computer or tools to space your letter. So it's we'll just call it spacing. Rolly thinks we should call it spacing too. <laughs> yes, I know. To eat. I'm gonna say. Don't eat my shoulder. Don't do it. It's not very tasty. All right. Well, we are gonna get the kiddos all squared away. Morgan, would you do the honors and direct our fine followers to the? Oh, actually, you know what? Why don't you get him set up? I'm gonna do a little hello. How are you? Do more of my hello, how are you? Um, and <clears throat> just real quick, um, thank you to everybody who has been placing orders on our online shop, ladyfingersletterpress.com. Morgan has been at the studio all morning, um, filling orders, printing some custom stationery. Uh, she takes Rolly with her. I have Gio and Frankie, and uh, it's been a nice little team, but she's been getting a lot done. So if you've placed an order, thank you so much. We are getting those shipped out. Um, We're getting there. We are getting there. It has been... It's um, slow, like, two hours a day. Of yeah, she only really gets, like, two hours a day of any uh, quality work time. So um, thank you, and thank you for your order, and thank you for your patience. Um, we also have uh, some more goodies for you guys. Every day I keep um, asking you if you have a, bra a, a print home. Oh, and geez, I'm sorry. I know. One of these days she's going to bring home a print so I can show you guys that she's well, been working on. there's your put. Well, yeah, I mean... Okay. Uh, we have you our... You remind me before I leave work. I know, I should. Um, we will always figure it out. This is um, a puzzle. I actually haven't shown you guys, but when we had our anniversary in September, um, I thought I was being clever by making this for her because it's like, we'll figure it out like a puzzle. Um, <laughs> and... I am so cheesy. You, have, you guys have no idea. Uh, but we have this um, design um, on our website as a free download if you want to download it and tack it up on your wall or make a little nice foam wallpaper for yourselves. We also have a really beautiful 12 by 12 inch letterpress print of that that's now finished and shipping. We also have uh, a postcard project of that design where you can... Um, for a dollar, we will ship up that out as a postcard, cover the postage, address it for you, all of that. Um, and if you want to pay it forward for some other folks to be able to send some postcards, you're able to donate a little bit more if you want. 
we have our beautiful hand lettering booklets on our website. We have um, them as part of our <clears throat> pen kit pack that has our favorite pens in there. I just placed an order for more pens, and those are going to be oh, online good. Oh, good. once they arrive. For, oh, so is this sold out for now? Um, we are, I think I have like five left to okay. ship tomorrow. We have five left. And we're just waiting for a pen refresh, which will hopefully be here no later than the end of the week. Okay, so did you guys hear that? We're going to be getting some more pens at the end of the week. So if you've ordered them um, after those last ones, five, five ones are sold out, we'll be shipping the next round at the end of the week. Um, we also have our beautiful free line guide that is on our website. If you want to download that and print it out, it's all free for you. Um, and uh, we are going to be doing the letter Q today. So um, folks at home, grab your favorite pen, your favorite paper, your favorite iPad, because you have so many iPads hanging out. I know you do. You have like the first generation you give to the kid and then this one you also give to the kid and hope they don't drop it. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm using my iPad with an Apple Pencil and I'm uh, mirroring my uh, iMac using Photoshop. If you are at home and you're using an iPad Pro and you want to draw on your iPad Pro, <coughs> Um, you are welcome to use like apps like Procreate or Adobe Sketch. Those are also a lot of fun. Um, but it doesn't have to take a lot of technology to do this. It is, um, oh, I was looking for the letter P on your YouTube, but I couldn't find it. P was yesterday and I had just come into the computer. Um, Valerie, I just saw your comment. I just, um, have uploaded it. So I download it from, it's coming. I'll do it after this class. <laughs> I'm not going to explain all the all of the rigmarole I went through to do all this, but um, it is coming. It will be so, there. Yeah. We haven't lost Pete. I, um, I definitely try to do it as soon as possible, so I appreciate you guys checking back in and, um, you know, checking out that lesson from the day before. Um, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, I, I will get to that today uh, for sure. Okay, thanks. No problem. All right, Morgan, you ready to yeah. switch it around? We got babies over here. We got kids eating apples. We got lines. We got letters. This is awesome. All right, so let me... It was so funny. Gio today earlier, um, while you were at the studio, Morgan, he came in here and he just... He, he actually, you see that yellow chair over there? Yeah. I hear this loud bump. And I come in and he just like came over here and he like, instead of moving it out of the way, he just like threw it on the ground to push his little chair up to the table because he's like, I want to see your class. Oh, and I'm he's like, here for the class. Yeah, he's like, I didn't want to miss your class. And I was like, oh, <laughs> hold on. It's, it's not yet. And also, don't just throw furniture around if you can't get it. <laughs> oh, good word. Way. All right. Um, How's that looking? Okay, we're good. We're all lined up. Sweet. Um, if we have any Rhode, Island here, Rhode Islanders here, um, I just want to give a quick shout out to our friends at Frog and Toad oh. who are making some awesome stuff happen in Rhode Island and in Providence. Um, they have a I, website too, right? Frog and Toad. They do have a website. They are selling t-shirts um, with a funny saying that their governor, um, Gina Raimondo, said, oh, she said, knock it off um, when she was talking about people going outside. Um, so they made and, a funny t-shirt. And, and not covering their mouths. They're not social distancing. Yes. Uh, they made a funny t-shirt with their governor's um, saying, and they're selling it. 20% of the proceeds go back to a great foundation that's helping a lot of nonprofits in town. And I just saw, so they're getting printed locally in Rhode Island, and then they're also delivering all the local deliveries by bicycle, so they can employ Aww. the bike messengers. So way to go, Frog and Toad, our friends. They sell our cards there in Providence. Yeah, um, good people, Asher Schofield. And crew. And family, but um, excellent job. If you need a shirt that says knock it off. <laughs> <coughs> I might just. Well, we probably should order one. Yeah, I, okay. we should. You're right. Okay, so we are going to start with our letter Q. And if you guys were with us on the day we did our letter O's, uh, you may remember how sort of challenging it was to draw these O's kind of perfectly. Um, <clears throat> they are... They are a um, 
They are an exercise in um, patience for sure and persistence. Um, but again, hand lettering is fun because you can make it, you know, if it gets wonky, you can be like, oh, I totally made it to, you know, meant to make it look wonky. But of course, you want it to be as beautiful on paper as it is in your head. So I'm going to teach you all you need to know to um, give you the tools so that you can practice to get it perfect as perfect as you are able to make it. So we are actually just going to start with a mono weight sans serif basically a gigantic old capital O, which if you recall from our former class, we are gonna just sort of rise a little bit of, oops, rise a little bit above that cap line, a little bit below that, below that baseline, ideally. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So don't worry if it doesn't. Um, and mono weight, meaning one weight. So meaning there's no contrast in our stroke. And sans serif, meaning without a serif. And we will get into more serif talk as we approach that part of our uh, class. We are gonna be doing our sans serif today, we're gonna be doing our serif, and we're gonna be doing a script style as well. So let's get going on these O's. We are gonna, or Q's I should say. It starts as an O. So we're gonna try to make a pretty um, oval looking O. You don't want it to be circular, but you don't want it to be too like pointy, like an egg or anything. Um, and what we're gonna try to do, we draw that outside shape first, and then we're gonna like really do our best to make that inside shape as close as possible to being a, like one weight. Uh, one equal weight throughout that stroke. Now, as you can see, this one is also just like super wonky. Uh, I'm gonna go and use my eraser tool and just kind of um, sort of trim that back. Okay, now that's perfect. Just kidding. I'm gonna, I have a little bit more work to do here, people. If you are working at home and you have a pen and paper <clears throat> and you're using uh, like black ink or blue ink or something, if you happen to have like a jelly, like a white jelly roll pen or a white paint marker, those also um, do wonders when trying to sort of correct or erase like a pen mark. Um, now, as you can see, this looks, I mean, if you zoom in, you know, these lines are not really um, super, super crisp. But, um, you know, if you, you can spend a lot more time on it to really fine tune that letter. Uh, the mono weight sand serif style is pretty tricky to achieve. Um, pretty tricky to achieve that uh, sort of uh, consistency and an excellence and perfection, um, especially if you're trying to make like a very um, sort of perfectly round shape. Um, I feel like my axis on this is also a little bit tilted, uh, but that's. Um, a bit uh, but you know what I feel like for for me that I'm just gonna say that's okay for now um, <clears throat> now with our capital Q there are a couple different ways we can go about drawing that tail um, you can draw your tail uh, very sort of plainly like this and I can you know fill that in make it oh you know what I want to do here hold on I'm gonna, for argument's sake, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Um, so we can just experiment with a couple of different um, tails. Just, I know that you may not have that capacity to do that at home, but um, I just wanted to show you real fast. So you can draw your tail almost um, like flat end to flat end very geometric there. I'm really trying to make sure that that thickness there is the same thickness as your stroke there. So that's a cue that you can do. You can also do a cue, um, and this is kind of my, my favorite way to draw a, a letter Q, is to just make a really kind of fun tail like this. Um, now because it's mono weight, you sort of have to go back in and make sure that all is all very, um, equal and balanced, but 
also a little tricky to do that very well. It takes a little bit of practice. I love cues like this. That's just like a lot more fun. Um, and usually when I draw cues like that, I try to start on this left-hand side somewhere. Um, you could you could get a little bit lower. You could start there. You could even probably start from the middle or so. Um, but the middle is probably as far right as you would like to go. Um, and then, of course, if you really want to get creative, and if you're very confident in your, um, you know, uh, flourishes, you can. Oh, why is my panel chunky like that? It looks like a bunch of sausages. And I'm just gonna. <laughs> that wasn't a very good demonstration here, people. So I'm very sorry about that. Um, you could go ahead and make your uh, flourish. <laughs> Very flourishy. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a terrible way to um, show you guys how to do this because it's a little, um, a little like, uh, reactive. But the idea is that you're just trying to like pull out that tail and make it fun. You can use this as an opportunity to connect to other letters. You can use it as the the the, the cross on your the crossbar of your T. Um, and, you know, you can spend... Well, you, you don't like, you don't like the, T, the, the Q I'm drawing here? Is that what you're trying to tell me? You might be... Is he hungry? Oh, sure. Oh, kid's always hungry. All right, so these are like the three sort of tales that, that we will also carry through in the rest of this lesson today and try to do with the um, other the sans serif with contrast that we're going to do after this, the serif letter form and also the script letter form. So to draw our lowercase monoweight sans serif Q, we are going to start with kind of an ovally, like leany ovally shape. Try to make the... Uh, weight pretty even around the whole thing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my um, stem kind of intersect that uh, uh, that round shape that bowl almost like it's you know going through there we want it we want there to be some interaction there we don't want it to be um, just leaning next to the stem, otherwise it looks like just like a little hula hoop that's sitting against a wall, and there's no continuance, um, continu continuation of that form. So sometimes you can make your lowercase q's like almost a little like backwards p's. Um, you you don't necessarily need a little um, tail at the end of this, but you can connect it back. You can go from the mean line to your descender line here and fill that in almost like it's a little coffee mug holder. You would definitely want to be aware that this shape is, this counter is smaller than this counter, that those shapes are smaller on the bottom. You can also, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna um, replicate this so you can also see the different kind of tails on this lowercase q as well. So that first one was a very um, coffee, coffee handle esque. That one's really thick. I'm gonna try that again. With the mono weight, sometimes it's easier to like start thinner, and then you can always thicken it out as you need to. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I've seen lowercase Q's come out like this. Do something like this. <coughs> Okay. Although I would probably in this instance, um, probably try to, uh, why is that happening? Um, angle off that um, tail in a kind of cute way, like this. So it sort of maintains its 90 degree um, angle. Um, and then another way that you can do it, I mean, you could do um, 
details that uh, even, you know, to sort of mimic the, the more decorative type of the, uh, if this is like one, two, and three, you know, this is the one, two, and three that go with this. So these, this one kind of mimics that sort of idea where you get a little bit more, uh, more decorative, a little bit more ornamental. I'm just gonna kind of shave that down over here with my eraser tool. So those are three different approaches to your lowercase q. Um, all right, so we are gonna do a sans serif with contrast now. And that means that instead of trying to make all of these strokes the same weight on all areas, we are going to um, add a little bit of contrast. So the trick to contrast is our little cheat sheet here, which um, usually is the rule, but is uh, broken one now and then. Um, so the, the general idea is that whenever you have a up and down um, uh, up and down stroke, it's thick. Anytime you have a crossbar, it is thin. Anytime you have an upstroke to your right, it is also thin. And when you have a downstroke to your right, it is also thick. So that's kind of the, the, general, the general rule. Uh, we saw with our letter M's and N's that that's not always the case because our M's are like this. So you have a thin here and a thick here. And then with our N's, you have a thin and a thin. But when we're doing our lowercase q, or any, you know, or uppercase q, for example, um, there's not really any, um, we're not breaking any rules of this letter. But I would like to show you this because when you are drawing this circular shape, you're gonna be using these principles here, this thick, and th this thick up and down, and this thinner side by side, because you're gonna be making your, your thick strokes on the sides and your thin strokes in the center. So let's try drawing a uppercase Q. And it's gonna be like a an O. Again, we're gonna try to like extend that out. So I start by drawing like a really kind of a wonky shape, but then I wanna come back and I wanna give myself that contrast. Um, trying to keep in mind that, that I'm sort of um, flattening out this counter in the middle. And I realize that right-hand side of my O, well, it is an O, until it becomes, a, until you have the, key, the tail, it's an O. But um, I'm gonna try to even that side out a little bit. These are hard letters to do. Um, but it, even if you look at, um, some if you took like a um, t if you like typed it out on the computer, it may not always be. Um, Hi, G is for Geo. G is for Geo. We're not drawing G, you silly goose. We're drawing a Q and a. We're drawing some O's and we're gonna make them a Q. But it looks kind of like a big G, doesn't it? So, uh, uh, as I was saying. <laughs> What? So funny. There's just a lot going on right in this I know. Moment. I'm like, I don't, what the heck was I even talking about? Yeah, that's what I was laughing at. Sorry to laugh at you. It's okay. I'm just going to make a bunch of wonky O's right now. Um, notice that they're just like a little bit um, narrow. It's okay. It's okay to be narrow. As long as you um, really try to taper that contrast in at the top and at the bottom. You really don't want to get too much um, thickening in that um, horizontal space. And tapering is, I'm like, I don't know if that is clear what that is meant to look like. But it's a, it's a taper. But, but yes, Gio? Yeah, um, those, 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 um, those, those, those drums on, on your, on top of your, your, your fingers. There's germs on top of your fingers? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's why we, what do we do to get rid of our germs? I do that. You do that? Do you wash your hands? <laughs> our, our uh, afternoon uh, public service announcement brought to you by Geo. So with our sans serif 
uh, cues. Cues don't really have a serif. Um, serif, of course, is the little um, foot at the end of your letter form. Serif, serif, serif. Uh, with a Q, it doesn't really have a terminal to have a serif, and you don't really draw a serif on that little tail. But when you're drawing um, a sans serif with contrast, you definitely want a, differenti a differentiation in this uh, thickness of your horizontals and your thickness of your vertical strokes. Um, but when we're doing our little tail here, you can do something, um, you know, pretty standard like this, having a very like uh, thin, um, a thin tail. I've also seen the tails sort of get a little bit thicker here, where this thickness is kind of mimicking that thickness. And I'm going to try to erase some of this nonsense over here so that we can use this as a tail as well. See how many different ways you can draw the tail of the cues? I think if you have the space to practice and the time, I think like today would be a really fun day to just go at it, draw a bunch of really awesome tails, and um, see how see how that makes you feel. It might make you feel really good. Um, if you really want like a really fun exercise to get you going with these tails, you can actually start your pen kind of from up here. So like I'm starting up here. I don't know if that's clear. On, I'm, I'm sort of making the mark because I want you to see where I'm starting from. But I'm kind of coming down and I'm, I'm sort of using that momentum from almost, you know, mimicking this round shape down here to add to the um, style of my tail. So I actually want to make this a little bit thicker too. This still has contrast because these crossbars are not quite as, <coughs> excuse me, um, as thin, as thick as the up and downs, the stems, but it's a little bit thicker than this guy over here. So just kind of a different, um, a different style. Kind of a cool little cue. So let's drop down to our lowercase cues with contrast. I'm just going to do them below here so you can kind of, actually, let's see. All right. So with our um, lowercase Q, again, we're going to start from the mean line to the baseline, also referred to as the X height. And we're going to give ourselves a little bit of uh, contrast on the end. And then again, we're going to give our little stem here. And with this, um, with, with this shape, we're just kind of keeping the axis a little bit skewed, just like this was. Um, but because we're skewing that axis, we're really trying to keep this up and down thick and this space as thin as possible up there. So again, we can just have uh, no, no stem, or no, I'm sorry, not no stem. We can have a no, um, no tail on that lowercase q. We also want to make sure that we are sort of eclipsing that bowl with the stem. And if we're doing it this way, we want to keep the uh, thinness similar to the thinness in our in our bowl there over here. Ourselves that stem again. What's he doing? Oh my gosh. You guys are so funny. <laughs> Gio has a different voice for each of the twins. How do you talk like Roland? How does Roland talk? Hi, baby. I think you're missing some 
Frankie. And how does um, Frankie talk when you talk to Frankie? Can you hear me? <laughs> what, what about Little Cupcake? How does Cupcake talk? <laughs> he goes, oh, you little baby Cupcake. Something like that. All right. You ready to, you gotta flip the phone. Oh yeah, I do. How do I, I'm so bad at this, gosh. Oh, this is like that, the lowest technology. <laughs> I was on a conference call this morning uh, with our city that uh, the downtown partnership group had organized about like loans and financial stuff and um, bailouts and applications with banks and stuff. And it, it was this like this uh, go to meeting and then there's Zoom. There's all these like online platforms to do what we're doing with the phone here. Um, but I kind of I appreciate the. Hi, baby. I'm getting a little experimental here while you talk. I don't know. I just like, it's nice that it's not like, I feel like it's reflective of where we are. Everyone's, you, you can tell how good people are with technology by how terrible they are with their video conferencing. I think our true selves are revealed. Yeah. We're learning. Yeah. So anyway, this is kind of weird. I don't know if I've ever drawn a cue like that before, but I was just doodling while Morgan was talking. Um... And I'm not sure if I would do that again. It kind of looks like a German, uh, uh, what the heck is that? It's like a str uh, the double S. Uh, what is the name of that double S? Anyway, I should know what that is. Someone we are going to move on to our um, serif uppercase cues, which are going to look a lot like this. But the one different thing that we're going to do so I want to show you guys a little trick. Rolly, maybe you know this one already. So I just drew that all in one. Rolls. I drew that in one one pass. I did not. One minute, Rolly. I did not pick up my my pen making this shape. So let's try that again. We're gonna start from the outside, and then once we get to the top again, we're gonna to switch to the inside. Might be good to zoom. Yes, I can zoom for sure. Let's try this one more time. So when you're drawing this initial letter That's form. very nice, Gio. Thank you, honey. Hold on, let me move this a little bit closer so we have some more space. Okay. So let's start from the outside. And go inward. I don't like I don't like working at this uh, scale, hun, because it's um, oh, really hard for me to draw. Also, we lost the screen. Here. Oh, Gio knocked us out. Oh. It means you have to draw bigger. I just wish we could like zoom in. I guess we can. I guess we could. Here, let me try. Let me try this. I'm gonna do this, and then. Well, no, because then. Yeah, I. I see what the... Uh, I don't think I can make this bigger when I'm not looking at it bigger on this okay. side. But Sorry. let me try this one more time because I think Gio kind of um, hit the screen before. So we start with the outside shape and then we give ourselves that contrast. Let's be gentle with our teeth. Thank you. By like not picking up our pen, but just kind of going over and refining that shape in that initial in that initial stroke. I find that that helps me because my hand has that sort of muscle memory and it sort of is able to mimic more of that shape at, like when I do it very quickly in repetition from the initial um, movement. So if you are struggling with trying to get um, O's that look decent, you know, try to just do this, you know, kind of you're like looping around and around until you're happy with that shape, and then you kind of go in and fill in those um, uh, contrasts. But for our um, serif, uppercase Q, what you can do here is you can give yourself a little teardrop terminal, which I love on my little serifs. So a teardrop terminal, This. The end of this being a terminal, because it's the end, 
and then a teardrop. Uh, these are, these are um, you know, little teardrop shaped, um, you know, uh, attributes to your terminals that you can use. I use them pretty often in my work. I like those. Um, of course, you can just do a, cur a sort of curved tail like that. You can make it go below, below the baseline. You can have it sit on the baseline. You just want to make sure that that cue, you know, I know we're drawing bunches and bunches of cues over and over again. Um, and it's kind of hard to see at some point, you know, it starts all looking kind of the same. But, um, you know, you may want to just take a step back, look at your cues, just say to yourself, how do, how do I like, how do I like that shape? Is that looking good to me? Uh, does that make sense to me? Um, is this still looking like a cue? And then, of course, we can do a very decorative um, a very decorative tail. Now there is a little bit of contrast in this tail. I don't often uh, recommend adding some contrast, but I'm doing that because I'm working at this scale that just seems really um, thin to me. So I want to be able to make sure that it's consistent with the thin parts of that. And then our typical boring little tail there. And if you're, if you're hand lettering a cue, I don't know why you would ever just want to settle for something like this, but maybe you do. Maybe you just want it to not really grab anyone's attention, but at least you could do a little, a little bit of a curve there, which is kind of fun. Or a little teardrop terminal down down in the down in the gutta. All right, let's do a lowercase uh, serif Q. Actually, the lowercase Q does have a serif. We're gonna start with our bowl here. Our stem here and our serif on our Q. You can do the serif off to the the right there. I do. Do you want to see um on the top of your hands? Do I want to see the top of my hands? Hun, top I see the top of my yeah. hands all the time. Um, I mean all hands. Yeah. I think it's the germ video. Just the germ video? Cool. You know, yep. kids' is... cartoons on. Don't well, I see? noticed, let me see. I noticed that Pink Fong now has like a little like Baby Shark song. Wash your hands, do 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 do. Wash your It's like a commercial before the YouTube thing starts. That's wow. amazing. To the fingertips, bubble power. Nice Don't job, Gia. Oh yeah, the germs are on your fingertips. That's right, you gotta make sure your fingertips are washed too. Get yeah. all those germs. Okay, so we're going to go back to this cue with this uh, serif cue, and then we can also do a full serif on the bottom as well. So those are two ways to draw your lowercase cue with a serif. Both ways I've seen done with a serif off to the right only and a serif on both, so that's okay. Um, and now we are going to draw some um, uh, script cues. Now, if you learned cursive in school, um, your, your cue was something like this, which I never quite understood why. It just looked like a giant number two. I'm not gonna draw it like that. Uh, but I am gonna draw it like our um, uppercase O's. So, oh wait, you know what I'm missing here? I'm missing our script. Lines. Okay, we're gonna set up these script lines. This is basically the angle that we're gonna try to maintain here, the uh, angle of our axis through our letter. So we're gonna thicken up our contrast here on that left hand side. Frankie, if you're feeling feisty, you can add some contrast to the right hand side as well. Sometimes I just I sometimes I just like drawing uh, the contrast on the left hand side, and then go ahead and give yourself a nice pretty little tail there. 
you can do your cue. Sorry. With your um, loop a little higher up. Notice this one's a little bit higher. This one's a little bit lower. If you want to, you can give your, your tail a little bit of um, contrast there. These are really beautiful. I feel like I'm on like a Mar Martha Stewart. Yes, isn't that nice? Is, isn't that a beaut, isn't that a nice cue? Like Bob Ross, these are some happy cues here. Um, on a side note, if you don't already follow Martha Stewart's personal Instagram account. Oh my God. I'm not talking about the one that's corporately like Designed. controlled. I'm talking about Martha Stewart, I think 48. Martha <laughs> Stewart 48. <laughs> It is actually oh. Martha, and she's like taking her own pictures, her selfies with her, no her makeup, own, own type, her, her own, own like, typos, typos and grammatical errors, and it is just so refreshing, folks. So refreshing. She talked about uh, how much she misses her manicurist, her makeup artist, her hair person, and she gave some beauty tips this week that were really just man. Follow Martha Stewart's personal account. I was actually just thinking about that, about all like the famous people who used to have staffs. Yeah. You know, rich people or whatever. And um, now you they can't have staff. Like, how are they getting by? They can't cook. Um, I saw Oprah. She was cooking uh, some spaghetti carbonara. Bread. Um, she was like, I love bread. But uh, also my favorite is Kubota. Um, tractors and like outdoor gear gave Martha Stewart a riding lawnmower. Please go look at them. I'm gonna repost the picture. It just brings me so much joy. It's Martha Stewart in like the biggest riding lawnmower you've ever seen as like a marketing. She's she's posted about that a few times too, where she like loves her oh riding lawnmower. Oh my god, lawnmower. I would be so psyched like, if so. I would keep posting if someone gave me a riding lawnmower too. And, and like chainsaws and stuff. Yeah, but anyways, Martha Stewart forty eight. Go go follow my girl. <laughs> we met Martha once. We did a, a a she they she invited us to do lettering at one of her um, parties, and we have a very blurry picture of us with Martha Stewart. Yeah, she she moved by real quick. We didn't get to see her very long. Um, okay, so what I did here while we were chatting about Martha um, was uh, using this tail of the queue as a uh, baseline as creating our own baseline here for the rest of, a, of, a, of a, the word. Um, you don't have to do that, but I, I drew this really um, bulbous <laughs> flourish, and then I thought that might be really nice, because uh, what I ended up, what actually made me think of this was that, hey, I just totally uh, went, went and got in the way of the rest of my letter, of the rest of my words. And that's sort of like the first rule of flourishes is like you really, really, really have to keep in mind what is coming after this letter. Um, is this flourish gonna get in the way? Is it going to add to the, the decoration of the rest of your word? Um, in this case, I, I, I dropped this N down to kind of intersect with it to kind of add a little bit more interest. But, um, Definitely have it like planned out in your head to an extent where you're saying to yourself, okay, do I have any letters that have descenders in it? Um, do I have any letters that are going to be getting in the way? Um, so, so try to plan that out. If you're doing a bigger uh, layout, I would recommend doing a, just a little sketch with some paper and pencil just really quickly to jot out your, your general placement and ideas. But um, Always make sure what is happening around you with those um, flourishes. Uh, so speaking of which, we will do some lowercase um, script cues. And we're going to kind of come up as if we are drawing that letter, or as if we're drawing that letter in the middle of a word. So we're going to kind of come up and stop halfway, pick up our pen, and then draw that bowl again. And then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to fill in that contrast here and again we're going to uh, draw that that stem we're going to come up to the baseline and I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here 
Notice that I haven't, oops, notice that I haven't come all the way to the end. What I'm trying to do is I'm, going to, so I'm visually planning like this amount of space for my stem. So I don't need to come back all the way. And then I'm going to jut that back back out. Then I'm going Should to, we go potty? No. Okay. Then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to fill in this. Are you sure? Space here. Are you asking me? No, I don't have to go potty, but thanks oh, for asking. Gosh. Um, let's try drawing that again. So we're going to come up, meet our letter, pick up our pen, draw our bowl, give ourselves that nice little axis, fill in that contrast, come down, fill out the rest of that stem, and continue on. Um, if you are doing using your lowercase q as um, you know a, more of a decorative element, you can do you know pull out the um, pull out the tail and use it a little in a, in a little bit more of a decorative way. Uh, but then again, you will probably have to start your u because usually there's a u after your cues. You're going to have to really start your U without any lead-in. So that is just something to, to make note. Your U is not going to be drawn, you know, with this little part to it. It's just going to be straight up. Sort of naked like that. Um, so let's draw. Um, I know that I did this queen word. Let me uh, draw a word that has Q, capital Q. Um, let's do queer, because why not? Let's see, how do I want to do this? Oh, you know what I want to do? I'm going to make my tail really nice and long and I'm going to ride out that baseline. My E's. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to give myself a little teardrop terminal here to reflect that one. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to thicken that up. Yesterday we had someone ask about the uh, th the thickness on the R's. Tomorrow we are going to be doing our R's. Um, so stay with us to learn more about that construction of that letter. Um, and then um, let's do for a letter Q in the middle of a word, uh, peak, like peak your interest. We're gonna start with our stem here. Come out, P I Q. Give my stem contrast there. Oh, you don't say, Rolly. All right, so. Did I spell that right? Peak, your interest? P-I-Q-U-E? I think that's, am I pronouncing it right? Peak, pick, pick, pick way? Your interest? I think that's how it's spelled and said. But again, I'm trying to maintain this, um, you know, common angle. I'm going from my mean line to my baseline. My descenders go all the way down to my des descender line, the descent line. And I'm trying to keep consistent thicknesses in my contrasts, even if they're curved or if they're straight. Really trying to make those as consistent as possible. All right, so that I think is our letter Q for today. 
Uh, good job on this one, guys. That was a little bit of a tricky one, but um, if you guys have more space to draw, if you have some more <laughs> lines, I know, Rolly. Uh, if you have more lines, just like give yourself a bunch of um, chances to practice these tails. And I would really love to see what kind of beautiful, decorative, ornamental, fili filigracious, fili filigracious filigree with your tails. I think Rolly would really like to see that too. Um, tag your work, hashtag lettering with ladyfingers, um, and we will take a look and share and um, douse you with just appreciation. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and if you guys like these workshops um, and want to throw us a couple of bucks, that would be amazing. We would love you forever and ever. We um, anyway. we, yeah, we love you anyway. Uh, we have a Venmo account at uh, Arley Rose, A R L E Y R O S E. Can I have both? Can I have her too? Can you find me both babies? <laughs> I want to hold all the babies. I didn't see you all morning. I was with you. Well, she was so sweet this morning. She's had such a good nap. Hello, my little angel babies. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Again, no stress. Um, we know many of you are at home without jobs. Yep. Um, we understand. Yep, we get it. And so, we're just doing these workshops because we like spending our time with you. And it's good practice for us to, to be maintaining our, uh, you know, our practice doing lettering. Uh, these guys like hanging out here too and having the nice hour for themselves. Um, but if you guys uh, place an order again on our website, we will be getting to those orders as soon as these guys let us. Yes. And to, we will see you tomorrow at two o'clock mountain daylight time. Um, wherever you are, we hope you're well, we hope you're safe, we hope you're wearing a mask and taking care of each other. And um, Gio's gonna tell you wash your hands. And Gio's gonna tell you wash your hands. Oh, he's still on the floor, I thought he left. We have everybody in the in the room right now. We have five people in this room right now. It's amazing. It's a, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. I love you so much.